It's just a casual conversation. All right, so this week we we are look, finishing up with the, the armor of God, and we ended with the, the offensive weapon that's being listed, and it is praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Um, one of the things that, that jumps out of, of this passage that, that I didn't really have time to go over in the sermon was all, 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 all. Um, it's just like when Paul's talking about standing at the beginning. He's like, stand, 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 seriously, stand there. He does that at the end with all, uh, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Um, and so clearly Paul is trying to end this by saying, this is your most powerful tool. This is your most powerful weapon. Um, and I think in my own life, the thing that the enemy tries the hardest to do is keep me from praying. It, it never fails that when I, in my mind and on my schedule, I plan on praying. That is when uh, people just show up at the office or that is when, uh, you know, the, a kid calls because the car is broken down. It's, so what do you guys do in your, practically speaking, realistically, day-to-day -day in your life to make sure that you have time for all prayer and all supplication for all the saints? Something that's been really good for, for me uh, is, and you talk about this today, it's, it's amazing to me that like in every circumstance where I know I need to pray, I just start worrying. Yeah. Over like I, my anxiety just goes nuts, and because I want to have a plan, like I want to be two steps ahead of everything. Like I want to know what I'm doing, how long I'm doing. Like that's just how I am. And then when thing when that when that plan gets thrown off, like I just get engulfed with worry and anxiety and, and trying to like automatically fix things. And instead, in that moment, like I should pray about that and, and, and take those issues and take those needs to the Lord. And so uh, for me, having somebody like well, you know, I'll compliment, I'll compliment Jesse on this. Ha having somebody who can look at me and say, "Hey." stop like you're, you're you're at a point where you're not healthy this isn't good like you're running yourself crazy and, and having that person whether it be a significant other or a husband or a wife or a friend or, or whatever somebody in a small group or your Sunday school class or whatever having someone alongside of me as much as possible who can say hey stop like this is not this is not your battle to fight this is not the, the battle's already been won like you don't like it's so much bigger than chill out yeah like it's so much bigger than this moment <laughs> yeah. that you're worrying about like take that to god like lay, you're whatever you're carrying like lay that down and so it's been really like just, that's one of the biggest things that i preach appreciate in jesse is she she has to look at me and just say hey stop like what you're like that you're not just relax put it down and to have that person who will say that to me, to have that that sister in Christ, but also somebody who's coming out of, of a place of, of love for me and my well-being who can say, this is not how you deal with things. This this is something we can pray about and we can, we can ease this burden in this moment right now. And that's something that really, in our relationship and just in my, my spiritual growth, that has, has changed things a lot, just having somebody and who will call me out on it. And logically, you know that you need to settle down, slow yeah. down, chill out, stop... But you can't always do it. Mm -hmm. But when someone else, that's that benefit, one of those benefits of having one another. Because somebody can look at you and go, stop. Yeah. Chill out. Stop. Relax. Look to God. You know, pull you back. I think for myself, it's just like what Pastor Tom talked about this morning. I think it's where me and you can relate a lot because I talk <laughs> to myself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have dialogues with myself, and that's yeah. really scary. You, know, like, <laughs> you, said, you said you were having dialogue with God. Go has dialogues with himself. No, 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 no. Wait, Wait, so different. Stop doing that. No, no. Just stop doing that. So you take both sides? Yeah, both yeah. You shut up first. <laughs> but, I, you know, trying to replace that with prayer, like, because I'll catch myself, and I'll be like, what are you doing? Like, you're just talking to nobody. You know, like, <laughs> talk to God. Like, you know, trying to replace that with that is subconsciously something that I try to do often, you know, because... I don't know how it is. I'll just be in the truck. I'll just start, all right, you know, Brian, will blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, talk to God. Like, Lord, I'm sorry I'm talking to myself. Like that, seems, I'm so full of myself that I'm going to sit here and have a conversation with myself. You know, like, like I can answer it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or, like I have to answer it. I'm going to come problem. up with a different solution <laughs> in my subconscious. Yeah. Yeah. But even so, you know, like you know, even in times of help, I catch myself doing that. Like I can fix this because, you know, doing IT or doing whatever, you're so used to being the one that's on call that's fixing stuff. And, and I have to stop and say, I need someone I can call on, you know, and God in these times, not just in the times when I'm in trouble, like the conversation the daily with just with God, you know, like 
you know, trying to do that subconsciously and stop relying on me or for everything is, is kind of how I'm trying to change that dynamic in my life, I think. And it's a, it's a day-to-day thing. I still talk to myself all the time and <laughs> have to well, stop myself. <laughs> you know, that kind of segues into a really good point. I, one of the things, even as a kid, that I recognized was humorous was that you would have people growing up in Gadsden, Alabama, who would sit around and talk with each other and they, they, they you know, had that deep Southern drawl. And then when they were asked to pray, all of a sudden they sounded like Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I always thought, where did that come from? <laughs> um, and so oftentimes we formalize prayer to a point that we forget it's just a conversation with God and he wants to meet us where we are. And so if we're angry, it's okay. God's not going to be in heaven going, oh my gosh, I can't believe he said that. He already knows. And so it's okay to express that anger to God. We've talked about how much of the Psalms are David being real with God. It's and so when we're, we're, instead of worry, if we can learn to reflexively, instead of going, oh my gosh, I hope my kid gets, gets in, then why are they 30 minutes late? I hope the car's not broken down. Well, there's, that doesn't do anything, but praying for that child at that moment does do something. And so uh, I am try, I've tried in my life to, to both learn and teach that God meets us where we are. We don't have to speak in Elizabethan or King James version to for God to understand us. If I go, our father, thou, and he's, oh, oh, he's talking to me. It's not, <laughs> that's not reality. You better listen to this one. <laughs> oh, now I can pay attention. Yes, yeah. Well, practical application for me, what you were talking about a while ago, I, I, I did the same. You know, you get caught up in your head, you need somebody to stop you. Mm-hmm. You know, the things that you were talking about too as well. But a few years ago, I had heard somebody and they gave me the idea. They said when they're praying, they go off on rabbit trails, you know, because say I'm praying for one of my kids, like Eli will be a senior this year. So I'm like, you know, God take care of him. And I'm like, oh yeah, I've got to schedule that appointment for his senior portraits. I wonder if they're going to be able to do that this week. And then I'm lost in things to do that I'm, that I've got this whole list of things to do and I've got completely off my prayer so the practical application was and this was a few years ago that I heard it somebody said they had a piece of paper and they kept it near when they prayed so that if something came to mind like that that they were anxious and needed to take care of they put it on that paper well I use my phone like that now I'll create a to-do list but it allows me to say I'm going to take care of this later and then I can go back into the into my prayer with God you know okay God will take care of this Right, but right now I need to be praying for a specific need. You know, somebody in the church that has a need. And I think, oh, I haven't texted them. And then, you know, you want to grab it and text them or call them. And then you totally lose prayer time. So I've had to do that kind of practical application with mine is to have something where I can make a to-do list. Well, and I, I, I'm ADD. And I, I remember very well reading um, a, a biography of, of a guy who would... He was Puritan. He would he would go out in the morning at like five o'clock, and he would get in the snow and pray, get on his knees and pray for hours. And I remember reading this guy. His name was David Brainerd. Uh, the biography of David Brainerd, by the way, is a great book to read. Um, but I remember reading that and thinking, okay, I'm going to emulate that. And so I would get, I set my alarm clock at for five o'clock in the morning and got up and um, got down on my knees beside the bed and promptly fell fell asleep. And did this for several days. And um, I remember not only now am I not praying, but now I'm not praying and feeling defeated. Um, Because I'm a failure. I can't even pray. And so one of the things that I I want to say, is, first of all, prayer is just like what we've talked about with Bible study. If you say, I'm going to read through the Bible in the first, you know, this month, you're, you're not. And, and now you're not only going to not have done that, you're going to feel like a failure. And the same thing with prayer, which is why I, I have learned in my own heart that if I divide up my prayer during the day, that actually I have, for that 10 minutes, I can actually have really focused prayer that if I tried to do it, say, say that I'm going to sit down for an hour and pray, I, I'm not. My mind is not going to be able to hold for an hour. The spiritual muscles required to be able to do that, I'm just not strong enough at this point in my spiritual walk. And so 10 minutes to focus pray for my family, I can do that. And then an hour and a half later, 10 minutes to focus pray for our deacons and elders, I can do that. And then an hour and a half later, 10 minutes to have focused prayer on 
church members where I've divided that list up or the staff or, or whatever. I can do that. And it, I, I, for me at least, breaking up my prayer time. And it took probably an hour or so the first time that I sat down with uh, the reminder app and set all of it up. It was a pain in the rear. I uh, finally learned how to cut and paste out of out of something else so that it wasn't as painful. But it, it was a it was painful. But I've been using that same prayer list, modifying it every now and then, now for three or four years. Because you don't have to do it again. So now I don't even think about until I'll get the alarm and I'm like, oh, i got to pray for my family. And so... I would recommend you know yourself. And so you know in your heart how to, to motivate yourself to do something. If you take nothing else from this, the imperative is pray at all times for all saints. We can literally change the world from our knees. Um, and I've shared the story a couple of times, and I wanted to close with this. There uh, was a gentleman, and you actually know him, because I bet, his wife was the librarian at the EBA for years. He was a retired missionary from South America. Didn't know. Uh, he gave me his library. And so I went over to his house to get all these books. He called me and said, I want my books to go to somebody that I know will read them. And so I would like to give them to you. And so I went over. And he was uh, in a hospital bed in his room at that time. And it was the standard hospice situation where you go in the living room and there's a bed in the living room. And I noticed that on the wall beside him, um, I noticed two things immediately. On the wall beside him was a huge world map with all kinds of notes and drawings on it. And there was no TV in the room, which is the first time in my life that I've walked into a hospital, hospice situation that there wasn't a TV there. And so we talked for, for a little while just about his life and how he'd been a, a pilot with Missionary Aviation Fellowship and, and what a great uh, life he had lived. And so I asked him, well, so what's the map? And he tells me... Um, well, I, God has, has, in his wisdom, made it to where I can't, I can't get out of the bed now. Uh, and so what I do with my time is I pray across the map for all these missionaries that I know. Um, and I can still do battle for my king stuck in this bed. And I remember sitting there at his bedside and praying, God, let me go out like that. <clears throat> He didn't go out on his knees. He didn't go out on his back. He went out with his sword in his hand in the fight. And so here was this man who had been invalided by just life. I mean, he was, what, 90? He was, he was, he was he lived a long time. And yet he still hadn't retired. He hadn't quit. He hadn't given up. And he recognized a lesson that I hope that you've gotten from this, is that we battle on our knees. And so fight, fight, fight. Don't give up. Don't quit. Stay in the fight. Anything else in closing? All right, so Donna, why don't you close us in prayer? All right. For all saints, all the time. All saints, all supplications. <laughs> Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you as always for our church family and for one another as we serve together, God. I pray that you would help us as a church family to grow in our spiritual disciplines, God, that we um, find ways within our own lives and hearts and schedules that we work it out that we are constantly in the fight for you. That, God, we remember that <clears throat> people don't need us. They need you. Mm -hmm. Through all of this, God, that what we're doing is pointing them back to you and that we remember that we don't resort to prayer as as. God, you've heard us make jokes before, and in my own heart I've thought about that, that we see it sometimes as the last resort instead of what we should see as the first place we go. Mm. Thank you, God, that we get to come before you. We thank you for the chance to serve you and love you. Amen. Amen.